Zeppelins were effective during World War I as transports and weapons until the creation of incendiary ammunition in 1916. German Zeppelin raids against England in World War I were initially ordered to pressure the English into surrendering to the Germans. Then, tragedy struck when many people were bombed and killed, and Zeppelins were shot down as a result. Originally, Zeppelins were invented by Ferdinand von Zeppelin. Ferdinand was nobility in Germany and was educated by personal tutors. Ferdinand originally stated his idea for the Zeppelin in a diary dated March 25, 1874. He was inspired by his speech on air travel. After his resignation from the army, Ferdinand designated all of his time to the Zeppelin. July 2, 1900 was the first flight of a Zeppelin, and the Zeppelin that was flown was the LZ-1. After this development of the Zeppelin, the government was very interested by this lighter-than-air machine. Ferdinand had the Zeppelin patented and started making a lot more Zeppelins. By 1914, the German Aviation Association had overseen the transportation of 37,250 people and over 1,600 flights without an incident. Zeppelins that weren't good for public use anymore were given to army service. One example of a Zeppelin that was given to the army was the Hindenburg, the failed Nazi Zeppelin. This is the introduction to the use of Zeppelins in warfare. By 1914, German airships had flown over 100,000 miles and carried 37,000 civilian passengers without incident. In the years that preceded the war, the German military became interested in airships and it was not long before her army operated mostly shoot launch airships and her navy operated Zeppelin airships and intended to employ those airships for scouting missions. When the war broke out in 1914, the chief of the German Naval Airship Division, Peter Strasser, expressed the utmost belief that Germany should leave no means untried to crush England and that a successful air raid on London would prove a valuable means to this end. German civilians echoed his sentiment. Despite the animosity towards Britain that Kaiser prevaricated, just as he did in late 1915, where German submarine warfare increased its attacks on all enemy ships. His main reason for postponing Zeppelin raids was fear of the effect that this unprecedented warfare might have on neutral countries' opinions, principally America. Following the realization, however, that the war would not be over by Christmas, the Kaiser experienced mounting military and public pressure to sanction raids on England. He finally succumbed on January 9, 1915. British cities of military value were therefore targeted, and only 10 days after the Kaiser's approval, Navy airships L-3 and L-4 were ordered to bomb military establishments on the River Humber. During May, the German military pressed the Kaiser for a free hand over London, for they believed it would be a mistake to swear the capital. It would not be understood by the German nation and would be regarded by England as a weakness. The Kaiser failed to yield to this pressure, Yet on May 31st, German Zeppelin pilot Leonard, allegedly believing he had stuck to the Kaiser's original conditions regarding the bombing of London, showed he was true to this earlier threat when he successfully bombed the capital. Dropping 119 bombs on civilian populated areas in the northeast of London, including Stoke Newington, Leytonstone, and Shoreditch. There were no intentional military targets. Seven were killed and 35 injured. All but two injured soldiers were civilians. The Germans, including the Kaiser, were overjoyed. The city of London, the heart which pumps the lifeblood into arteries of the brutal Haxter nation, read the new Snuckerichten of Leipzig, has been sown with bombs by German airships. Four further raids on London followed in 1915, and again there were generally no mil intentional military targets. More just an ethos of bomb what you see fit on the night. Furthermore, military targets were rarely hit, and most bombs fell in residential areas. London's second raid on 17th of August saw Navy airships drop 107 bombs on East London, including Walthamstow, Leighton, and Leightonstone. Ten civilians were killed and 48 were injured. The Army followed on September 7th 
by dropping 97 bombs on the east and southeast of London, including the Docklands and Deptford. Although one airship bombed the Millwall docks, a section of southeastern and Chatham railway track, in an area near to the Royal Dockyard, 18 were killed and 30 were injured. All but one injured soldier were civilians. Spurred on by this success, Navy airships targeted London the subsequent night, dropping 152 bombs over central London, including Bloomsbury, Holborn, and the city. Both some warehouses north of St. Paul's bore the main brunt of this attack, and an area of Liverpool Street Station had a few yards of track ripped up. Residential areas were again hit. 26 were killed and 94 injured, all but two of both the latter and the former were soldiers. London's and England's final airship raid in 1915 came on the 13th of October, causing the greatest casualties of all airship raids during the war. 189 bombs were dropped on mainly central London, including the Strand and Aldwych, although Woodwich was also hit. Though some bombs slightly damaged Woolwich's arsenal, the majority, though aimed at the Admiralty near Trafalgar Square, fell half a mile off target, striking the heart of London's theater land. 71 were killed, and 128 were injured. 17 of the dead and 21 of the injured were soldiers. Whilst these raids would have been significant for any country, their significance upon England was greater, for it meant that Britain was no longer protected by the mightiest fleet which had ever ridden the seas. Although no, no country had experienced aerial warfare, many countries were conscious that they could be subject to invasion. Estimated casualties from Germany's aerial campaign caused 4,743 deaths and 3,349 injuries. In material damage, estimates came to the equivalent of roughly 93 million in today's money. About 69 million of that was inflicted upon London itself. In 1916, the Royal Air Force Fighter Station in London were equipped with incendiary ammunition, which were used to ignite the hydrogen tanks inside the Zeppelin. This caused many Zeppelins to burst into flame and slowly fall to the ground below, while the crew was usually attempting to bail out, which usually caused them to fall to their deaths because of the emission of parachutes to save weight, which would allow the Zeppelins to rise faster. In the Treaty of Versailles, it was stated that the armed forces of Germany must not include any military or naval air forces. No dirigible shall be kept. On the coming into force of the present treaty, all military and naval aeronautical material must be delivered to the governments of the principal allied and associated powers. In particular, this material will include all items under the following heads which are or have been used or were designed for warlike purposes. Dirigibles able to take into the air, being manufactured, repaired, or assembled, plant for the manufacture of hydrogen, dirigibles, sheds, and shelters for every kind of aircraft. Pending their delivery, dirigibles will, at the expense of Germany, be maintained inflated with hydrogen, the plant for the manufacture of hydrogen, as well as the sheds for dirigibles, may, at the discretion of the said powers, be left to Germany until the time when the dirigibles are handed over. Germany later resumed Zeppelin manufacturing under the Third Reich, which ended with the infamous explosion of the Hindenburg.